you can either take the red pill, and you'll wake up, everything was a dream, or you can take the black pill, you can get torched. Well, I suppose getting torched won't hurt that much. I don't feel anything. Wait for it. Oh, wait. I just got a new client. Get torched! Get, get, get torched! Uh, get torched! I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, we're back for another episode of The Truth Hurts, a special episode. We're changing things up this week because our listener engagement, our comments from everyone, has just exploded in recent weeks, and we, we haven't thought we've been able to give it enough time in the usual podcast ducks. So we're going to go through a whole lot of listener uh, comments and questions for yep. you. Uh, and starting off with one that's pretty topical this week, given what's happened with Braden Maynard uh, and the Angus Brayshaw incident. Duck, what is the, this is from Max. What is the ideal tribunal system? It's a bit of a technical one. Is it one person, e.g. Michael Christian? Is it a match review panel, which they had a few years ago? Or should we go back to just the tribunal like the old days? I, I don't really care what it is. <laughs> I don't, as long as it's consistent. And I think you should be able to use precedence. And if you can use precedence, and you know what I mean by that. So Past Max instance. doesn't know. Yeah, correct. So if there's you know, something up and we can go back, we can look at it, uh, you know, some video footage of it and we can say, okay, well, that got one week and this is identical. So guess what? This gets one week. And then everyone in the football world is clear on what gets a week and what doesn't get a week. And if there are differences... And just like people are showing examples of Maynard, you know, and and other, you know, other players going back with the flight and knocking people out that, you know, and they're saying, well, they got nothing. But there's a big, there are differences in those. I haven't seen anything similar to Maynard. Some people are using the Paddy Cripps. Um, oh, I saw that. Of, of yeah. last Justin year. Lepich, um, who's, who's at Collingwood? He, he, he posted it on his Instagram. He said... Did Lepich... You he said, "Oh, and this got zero. This got zero weeks. So, uh, oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know, well, people are critical of Goody talking. Like yeah. Leper, probably not one that Leper should be posting out. I wouldn't have thought, but um, yeah. So to answer the question, uh, the right model is just a consistent model for me. I don't care whether it's a panel. I think generally you get a better. You probably don't want to pin it on one person. Yeah, because so then it's too much pressure." So there's been a few reasons for that. So originally they introduced the what we call like the the matrix, which is is it high, is it you know careless or intentional impact. Uh, so we had a set of guidelines, so you knew kind of how something would fit. We went away from the panel to one person because I think they were finding there were differences of opinion depending on who was on the panel at that. So you might have an incident one week. And there were these panel members, an incident another week, and it was a different, different panel. Yeah, correct. So, so it has to be consistent. And that's and that's where you get consistency, when you yeah. have the same people doing the same job week after week after week and using, as I said, precedence. The other part of I, I do remember back when they had the tribunal system, you yeah. were too young, but had little dingbats like you rolling up and hanging out there waiting for, you know, get an interview before you go in and <laughs> get an interview when you come out. And... I remember I walked in and I can't remember exactly what the char what I was charged for, but I striking probably yeah. yeah. And I remember um, walking in, you know, going because it's like a was uh, it's like a courtroom. You go up to you know give your evidence and yeah, you know, you've got the umpire sitting down there that's reported you, and it might be a boundary umpire that's reported you, no, not the field umpire. I said the little boundary umpire sitting there. You're trying to intimidate him. Or you're trying no, to eyeball him. No, no, <laughs> no, but you're looking at you're looking at him. Then you got Neil Busy, the the chairman of um, you know, the chairman of the tribunal, and he he's there and they start, you know, they all they ask you questions and you, you know, give your answers and then they ask, you know, and I, I remember one particular time I could tell that um Neil Busy, he he wanted me to get off. <laughs> you reckon he was angling the discussion? Oh, he was that. just he was he was 100 percent well to me that's how it felt i'm yeah. not saying he did and and you did get off um, yes and i i just felt that his questioning for me were was yeah. like oh yeah well you seem to be your eyes were sort of on the ball and you you know you you, you yeah that's what and i'm going yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> I just agree with everything he said and eventually got off. They are on a bit of a hiding to nothing, those AFL uh, uh, lawyers, the AFL council, uh, because they're, sometimes they're meant to argue these most ridiculous positions. And you know often when you're negotiating what a suspension is going to be, they'll always say the higher end. So they'll ask for this ridiculous ban. Uh, tough position. There's a funny story about Doug Hawkins uh, going to the tribunal and uh, knew he was in a little bit of trouble. Um, and as he walked in, he, he uh, Neil Busy is sitting there. He goes, are you busy? He goes, yeah, I'm busy. And he said, all right, I'll come back next week. <laughs> And I wonder how many times you've seen him wheel that out on a sports oh, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's quite funny. Now, this one's from Heath. Uh, would be interested to, interested to know, referring back to the 90s, does Duck think any of North's finals results have been any different had there been a week off, a.k.a. by uh, the week prior? And was would the team have been better prepared? Jeez, I've lost the ability to speak during this question. Uh, I'd argue in 93 it would have helped. And then again, maybe in 2000 with an older side, may have beaten Melbourne in the prelim with better preparation. Um, from memory, maybe 93, uh, we, we, uh, slowed up towards the end of the year. I remember myself being injured going into that final. So a week off there would have definitely, um, helped, would have helped me personally. So invariably would have helped the team, I would have thought. So yes, um, 2000, uh, I reckon we limped in as well, uh, again, and that was our seventh prelim in a row. So, you know, we, I don't think we're at our absolute fittest. So, yeah, he, he might be right. He probably remembers more than I do. I know personally in 94, if we'd won that prelim, I might I would reckon I would have been very doubtful to play in the grand final. So, you know, um, so that so if there was a bye before the, the grand final, then that would have definitely helped if we had won that game, but we didn't. So this Good is, question. This is from uh, Cup of Water. Cup of water. Interesting name. Good point about the buyer moving before the grand final. This is you when you change the tune. The two best teams deserve it, not whoever finishes fifth to eighth, especially with concussion protocols. Good work, boys. So less of a question, more agreeing with you from you, you when you change Thank the tune. Thank you, Mr. Hydration. Yeah. Uh, this is from Shane. Another Ripper episode, fellas. Good pick up, Ari, Chris Fagan, and Toxic Shame. And bravo to Chris for talking so candidly about what it did to him. Without wanting to dredge over the old coals, I recall clearly how you, Wayne, were paraded around by the media and others when you stuffed up, resulting in public scapegoating. Uh, keep up the great work, lads, and uh, get off the terps. Wink, wink. <laughs> That's a fair goal, Shane. Um, I don't know if I've asked you about this on uh, on here, and, and I always <laughs> be a bit of trepidation when I ask you something that uh, I haven't prepared you for. Do you remember, Tony Jones always tells this story about how he was chasing you around Koh Samui one time. Do you, rem do you remember that? But, I, I remember that uh, very well. Actually. So he was sent over to he was sent he was over sent, there. He was sent to Koh Samui. Um, I was uh, well. He got he got the uh, right he got the right place because I, I was in Koh Samui. So he reckons he saw you on the first day riding a motorbike. Something and I found <laughs> and I found, I found out I wasn't hard to spot. I was in every bar in, <laughs> in Koh Samui, parading around. Never had a top on, um, and yeah, it was just well, it was just over there getting away. And he, I heard someone said, um, Tony Jones, Channel 9, they'd seen Channel 9 there. And they said, and I thought, wow. And I obviously looked at my phone and I had thousands of messages and a heap from Tony Jones. And I thought, right. So as soon as I knew that they were there looking, um, I didn't go into hiding, but I, you know, was not as, um, you know, I, I guess not as prevalent at, the, the main bars or anything like that or, or, you know, at the main beach. So just hanging out at my beach. And then I thought, you know what, bugger, bugger Channel 9, bugger, <laughs> bugger Tony, I'm going to – I'll ring him up. So I rang up, I said, Tony, and he said, uh, oh, duck, I've been trying to track you for, you know, four or five days. And I said, well, you know what, I said, you've gone to the effort. What, by the way, what 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 do you want to talk about? Oh, look, you know, what, I'm just I just want to have a chat and – all right, well, what am I going to get out of it, Tony? <laughs> Thinking my holiday might get paid for. <laughs> um, and and he, he said, oh, you know, we'll just have a chat. I said, I'll get back to you. Anyway, I didn't get back to him for uh, a couple of days. And invariably he'd left Koh Samui. I didn't know. And I rang him and I said, Tony. I think you might have been in, mate. Was it Bangkok? He was in Bangkok. Yeah. So he'd flown back to Bangkok to fly back to Australia. And I got a hold of him. I said, mate, sorry. I said, look, I'm prepared to do that interview. <laughs> he said, really? I said, yeah. He said, I'm in Bangkok. He said, hang on, I'll call call the boss and I'll see if I can come back. But you're going to do it. I said, yep, done. Lock it in. 
Um, so I get a call back from him and I say, he goes, where are we going to meet? I said, just meet at such and such a bar. Um, I'll never forget, it wasn't right in Coastal Mill, it was a little bit out. And there was a bar about 50 metres away. So I watched Tony roll up. So he's flying back from Bangkok to Coastal Mill. He's sitting in this bar um, with his suit on, sweating like a mangy dog, <laughs> waiting for me. I sat in a bar 50 metres, no shirt, crisp, nice breeze bowling, drinking a few beers. He sat there for two hours and eventually <laughs> he rang. And uh, anyway, so I didn't, I didn't show up, but I watched him. Uh, sit there and then invariably flew back to he talks about the pressure he was under on that trip because the perception from work had started to become well tony's been in coastal Mill for five days he's produced no content what's he actually <laughs> doing over there his missus was giving him heat because i think they were meant to go on some trip <laughs> and so he's having to justify to her and then when he got to bangkok and she thought he was coming home and then he's gone he's gone I back felt, I, felt, I felt bad for about five minutes yeah no we've 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 discussed it um since and had a bit of a laugh about it um, it's well, you know what it's like, and Tony obviously wouldn't be given that role now. No, someone, someone more else, junior, yeah. someone more junior would be given that role. Yeah. Um, in actual fact, even then he was quite senior. I'm not sure yeah. why. Maybe he. he maybe I guess because it was such a it was such a, a big story. Obviously. Yeah. So so it was uh, yeah. I I had, did apologise to him afterwards and said I probably shouldn't have done that, but I was in one of those. Probably not thinking exactly clearly. No, I'd say not after a few days on the drink as well. Uh, this is from Jane Melbourne. As someone who spent his early his 20s and early 30s suffering from both poor judgment and a rubber arm, uh, it should be a legally recognised medical condition, the rubber arm. Uh, I could have benefited greatly from having access to your uh, do's and don'ts last week. So I, I think there's some um, great thought put into those, your Mad Monday do's and don'ts. And Well, not a lot of great... <laughs> Not a lot of great thought. Um, they, you know what, they evolve. Yeah, and sometimes uh, the the evolution of those decisions should not be allowed to evolve. It is funny. I think now, as a as a thirty five year old, I I still Are you only thirty five. <laughs> yes, I am. Are you serious? I'm a young man. I feel old. Though. I thought you were fifty six. <laughs> I do cop a bit of feedback sometimes that I look a bit old, that I look a bit older than what I am. No, thirty five, boy, I'd do anything to be thirty five again. Yeah, well, I, well, in finishing that sentence, I sometimes I I think, why am I making the same mistakes that I was making when I, when I was twenty one or when I was eighteen? But no, you only live once. Yeah, no, no, true, true, true. Uh, all right, moving moving on to the next question. This is from Jojo. Watch it every week, guys. Hi, Ed. And I had drinks with the Duck at the Barclay years ago with a mutual friend of his. The Barclay was a big Sunday night oh, um, down in St Barclay. Kilda down there. Used good to go at the lift. Very good strike rate. <laughs> uh, I mentioned to him I knew he was dressed up as a kangaroo's mascot at the family day in 99. This is some interesting areas. After the grand final, due to his fancy watch and fancy shoes. That's how he recognised you. Can you please ask him to elaborate on this for us viewers? Many things. Oh, so, why were you the mascot in no, I do remember that actually. Uh, I was, yeah, in the, we didn't have the new club rooms then, obviously. So, we just had the portables. But where the race, he had thousands of kangaroo supporters um, on the ground. And I had to get from point A to point B, which was on the other side of the ground. I had to be at a station. I think it was to sign autographs or do some. So, we all had to be at different areas. Um, and I thought, how am I going to get across from there to there without um, being stopped and, you know, not not getting there on time? So it had nothing to do with you know, trying to um, not fulfil my obligations, which some people will say, because every kangaroo supporter out there that came across me over the years, I signed every autograph, stood there for hours and never left a little, a little uh, kid without one. So therefore knew that I had to get across there. So I grabbed the Roo Ruckle. Grabbed him by the tail, flipped him out of his suit. <laughs> They're always very different people to people that wear those suits. I think you, you've got to be, don't you? I, mean, I, had a, I had a mate that used to go out to bars and um, tell all the girls that he's Aust <laughs> Aussie ostrich. <laughs> what and, did you think and, that was? A, did you think that was a selling point well, or something? I tell you what, it worked. Jeez. Um, so yeah, they well they thought Aussie was funny, so he told everyone. <laughs> anyway, so I flipped to. The, the little fella out of the, the suit, put it on and was able to get from uh, one one side of the ground to the other. But I did have I did have a few kids 
which I recently had um, a party for Carter and had Paw Patrol there. And the kids grab, you know, the tail and the, the arm and they, 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 they get a they get a little bit nasty. So can you just can you just explain to me what that or our listeners what that means? What? You hired you hired some people. I had like a puppet thing that puts on the suit. Paw Patrol, yeah. Is that, that's a Chase. kids that's a yeah, kids show. It's a kids is show, it? yeah. Just one person. No, there was a there was a girl that uh, made you know him dance and sing songs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was a while ago, but anyway, it was very hot. And it gets very hot in those suits, and yeah. I'm, I'm getting across, and then all of a sudden I realise what these. Uh, people go through when they're in the suit. If it's a hot day, they get they get bloody hot. Yeah. And then they have the kids just pulling off them and, you know, like pulling at them and, um, you know, just doing, you know, just kid stuff. So as I'm walking across the ground, no one knows it's me. So I'm just, and you get the big, you know, you've got the big eyes you can, uh, or, the, or the mouth you can see through. And a couple of little kids, you know, come running up and they're pulling at you. And I do understand why you've sort of got to flick your tail. I have wondered about when players do those family days. They obviously appreciate the support of all of the fans. Uh, some supporters are more enthusiastic than others. Do you do you dread those? Do you dread those days when a little you, bit? When you first started, you 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 loved it because it was it was like you were getting some sort of recognition. So people coming up you know, when you're 16, 17 asking for your autograph was a big thrill. Yeah. at the start. And then once you know, you once you sort of get into it, you you would prefer. I love the fact the one good thing about mobile phones is that people don't ask for autographs anymore; they ask for a photo, and I find that much easier. Really? Than, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you got to smile and do all that, though, don't you? Yeah. I guess it depends on what sort of condition you're in as well. Yeah. Um, you know, or where you are, and if you're not meant to be there, probably doesn't help. Well, I have I have a, a rule that I try and enforce with my mates is that don't, just don't bring the phones out late at night, fellas, because it, it, it just, if there's video or photos of you when you've had a few drinks, it just doesn't help anyone, I don't the, reckon. I, yeah, I, that's one area I don't understand why people um, want to video, you know, their mates doing stupid stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, I just don't get it. What mate does that? No, I agree. One, the one that's had a few beverages, making some. Uh, no, that's not an excuse. No, no, fair call, fair call. Now, uh, we did have a bit of feedback on the possums last week, and uh, we, we we have considered our position around around. Well, we just po- didn't. We just didn't think there was a whole episode on on talking about one's possum. Um, but what we what we are more than prepared to do is, um, we all know that Warney. I've already said Warney. Uh, God bless uh, the great man. He so had, David here's asked about Richard Wilkins. Oh, no idea. No. But I'll tell you what, if if it is, it's a big possum. But it's, it's not. Imp- he's got an impressive. It, no, it's, that's got to be real, do no, That's not a possum. I mean, a good a good mate of mine and uh, a, a lovely bloke, uh, very, you know, uh, Dusty Martin's manager, Ralph Carr. He's got a pod. I think it's well known that he's got a possum. Very thick black one. Yes. Uh, that, uh, you know, is... Oh, well, I, I think because Ralph's had his for so long, and Ralph's you know good looking man and smooth man and all of that, but he uh, he's had it for so long, people wouldn't even you know wouldn't even think twice about it being a possum. But um, he, he he wears it with um, conviction. Um, I think you know we I think everyone knows it's common knowledge now. The ex Australian cricket captain Ricky Ponting's got a possum. Um, sometimes well, I'm going to make no comment about Ricky. Why? Because he's a Tassie. Yeah. Well, he's a North Melbourne supporter too. But Ricky doesn't care anymore. He did. He did initially, but he owns it now. Sometimes it's stuck on better than others. I reckon. Like it can have a little bit of a, a tail. Can might have got caught up in the in the rib cage or something. But you know, <laughs> you know what? I, it can be a little bit, you know. But you've got. Uh, I remember well, Dave, David Hale had one of the. He looked like Herman Munster when he had his possum. It just went straight across. He's been clever enough to pull He's it off. He's got rid of it, yeah. He's got rid of it. Surely, this is from Real One, surely the duck is talking about chompers. Who? As if he has one. Tony Jones. No, he doesn't. No, no, no. no, no. See, this is where people get, get a bit of... If you okay. look at someone who's receding, they definitely don't have one because I can talk no, about this. Brent Guerra had a great... I thought Brent, Brent Guerra's, who's a ripping guy, he had... He had one of the good possums. I don't. I don't think. But he's now, he's now uh, decided uh, rather than put glue on his head to shave it. So he's he's just gone the other way. 
Um, one that a lot of people don't no, know. No, about. just don't fire all your bullets here. But yeah. No, but one of the ones that a lot of people don't know about is uh, Jordan Lewis from uh, Melbourne and Hawthorne. This is where I start exiting the conversation when we get too Why? many names out here. Well, he's got a possum. Have a look at Jordan. Have a look at Jordan before he retired at Hawthorne and went to Melbourne. He started, he wore the number three. And by the way, great, great player, great doing a great job, commentary and all that. And the thing about possums is as soon as you own it, no one cares. It's done. The argument's over. You go, yeah, I'm wearing a possum, who cares? That's it. So, But when he retired from um, Hawthorne, wearing the great number three Guernsey, he, he was starting to look more like lethal than Jordan Lewis. So he had that, you know, he's, the hole started, his barber started cutting a hole in the top of his head. And then when he got to Melbourne, a little bit of shoe polish went in and the, po- the possum went on top. And that's where that was. And, and, and in one particular game when we were watching, um, when I was doing work for Triple M, the possum nearly came off. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. We'll call in the game. And I remember, I think it was Nath Brown, because Nath Brown, he, he, a few of the commentary boys are fascinated by the possums as well. But once again, this isn't being critical of these people that are wearing possums. It's just some, some of them own it and some of them don't. And some of them look better than others. Oh, there's no doubt some about it. Some of them are really obvious. You can just see that it's, it's you know, just the, the ones that look... <laughs> Jordan's isn't like this. Jordan's, I think, looks quite natural on TV and everything. But you know, some of the ones they just uh, obviously glue it on top, but then it's not cut in properly. And you have, I oh know, there's probably a couple of the legs of the possums coming down the side. The front's crucial, no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> now, we, might, we might, we might have to get our lawyers involved for the for the for this segment of the of the. But look, 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 there's nothing wrong with having a possum. All right, just own it. All right, moving. <laughs> Moving on now. This is from George Down Under. Forget Charles or Wally. You're the king. And again, awesome show, like always. I have a serious question for you, Duck. Now, he asked this before the finals last week, but you might be able to give a more informed decision now. Uh, your two grand finalists uh, and your serious tip. Um, so- oh, okay. Two grand finalists. Um, well, I gave my tips earlier this week for this week. How about we leave the grand final? I'll, okay. I think it'll be a... What? Or oh, I'm gonna no because injuries can play a big part, and you look like a dingbat and suspensions with mate. Like, but we can ask you this again in two weeks when no, you know. no, no. I'm just I'll tip this one. What? I've tipped this <laughs> one. What? Okay, Melbourne Collingwood Grand Final. Thanks. That wasn't that hard. Okay, well let's and that's without knowing that the you know the. Uh, injuries and everything else. Well, if Melbourne has five injuries between now and the weekend, then we can next week we can explain that. I'll tell him they won't see that on TikTok when they see you when they see your yeah. little quote of you saying, "Yeah, Melbourne's going to make the grand final." They'll get beat this week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they didn't did so. the The final system was this is again a question without notice. Was different when you played. It was one v eight, wasn't it? And, uh, oh, for and one for a part for a part of it. Yeah, one v eight. Did you did you ever lose in that first week? It didn't happen very often no, when no, um, no well, Geelong. Geelong, famously in uh, 97, played us, finished seventh. We beat them. I went over to Adelaide, got beat, went out in straight sets. Yeah, okay. So so they got beaten by two teams outside the top, oh, outside so you the top was, four. You were seventh. Yes. Yep. So that's that was so that was big. big. I mean, it was unlucky. Like we finished seventh and we had injuries and yeah. everything else. I kicked seven, five in the final. Uh, <laughs> In the wet, no. In so, the wet, <laughs> so, have a listen. So it. we uh, and then and then Adelaide beat them, uh, and they yeah, yeah. So finished second and didn't go any further. It is a, I think it is fairer now. It's a tough first week for those top four teams, but it's fairer now that you get the that they all get the second chance. It, there used to be a lot of funny happenings with the finals. I remember even with you know the MCG had certain contracts to get a certain number of games each weekend, and so yeah. interstate teams were missing out on. Finals at home and um, well, Lee Matthews uh, talked about Brisbane having to come and Mick Mouldhouse. I think West Coast got robbed. They, they had to come play Essendon in a semi final yeah, over here. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it, we don't play. Unfortunately, we don't play in a in a in a perfect um, competition. Yeah, it's not it's not perfect and it's not completely fair. Yeah. 
that yeah, I think we accept that. Now, uh, to finish, Bill 234. Um, Ollie Wines revealed last week that Port have been using Oppenheimer as their movie inspiration. Any good ones that, that you used at North? It, it, it copped a bit of criticism, Oppenheimer, because yeah. obviously Ollie said we used Oppenheimer because all these people came together over many years for a common goal. It, what he admitted was the common goal killed 200,000 people in in Japan. So yeah. they caught a bit of heat about that. But have you any bizarre ones that, that Dennis wheeled out one week that you, that you thought? Uh, I'm not really. Did you have themes? Did really you used to have themes or? Not really. I'd, what would he lean on then? What would he lean on if it wasn't a theme? Um, oh, we, look, I, my memory's not as good as others, but I, I reckon we would have gone to see movies and that during the year or just before finals. Um I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure there was a movie actually one year. Can't remember. Do remember, I reckon it was 96. We went out during the week and we all went out onto the MCG. So we'd been given permission, but this not to train or anything. It was at night, so dark. And Ron Joseph came out with a cup in the ba- in a bag. So one of the premiership cups at North had won 75 or 77, had it in a bag and we're all sitting around, like all standing around and he, and he, Open the bag. I thought he might add a kangaroo in it or something. Um, and and uh, so this is before the grand final. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. opened the bag and there was the cup. And he said, "You know, this is what it's all about. You know, this is what we uh, want to get to." Would that have meant much to you then? Do you reckon, or oh, at the time, it you know a few tingles when you're standing on the MCG, and it's and it's dark, and you know it's it's quite a spiritual place. Um, let alone be at night, yeah, and that type of thing. So yeah, it, it, it put put a few tingles up the up the back of the neck. That's the that's the one thing that I, I it's never been lost to me. And maybe it's from someone who's um, not grown up around the MCG. It used to be a big deal for me as a Tasmanian to come to Melbourne and go to the footy. But even now, I find when I go to the G, there's something about the G, isn't there? When you yeah, when oh, you get- it's a pretty pretty special place, and you know it's and you know what we went through the. You know the Grey Southern Sand being built when it was knocked down, so the, the half the stadium was there at one stage when we were playing there. Didn't have a great feel then, but it it does now. Yeah, it's a, it's an awesome ground. You wouldn't put a roof on it though, surely. I saw that discussion again last week. Um, why not? Why not? Mm. Surely we love the G because of the all the all weather conditions there. Oh, and- if you can have it perfect all the time, why wouldn't you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm against you on that one. Okay. We might revisit that another time. But uh, thanks to all of our listeners for their questions. Some of them we haven't got to, but what I will say is keep sending them in because we want to do more of this sort of stuff. We want yep. more questions for the duck. Doesn't happen, it doesn't have to be footy-related either. If you've got something about uh, maybe not his personal life. Um, uh, mate, talk about the exquisite... Uh... <laughs> The ex- yes, the exquisite package. You couldn't go an episode without mentioning that. And uh, that's going to come up all year now. Well, from you. Yeah, you're going to bring it up. Just like you leaked it. Uh, <laughs> keep them coming, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. And that that's another episode of The Truth Hurts. You can either take the red pill. You'll wake up. Everything was a dream. Or you can take the black pill. You can get torched. Well, I suppose getting torched won't hurt that much. I don't feel anything. Wait for it. Oh, wait. I just got a new client. Get torched! Get, get, get torched! Get torched!